Welcome to the Michigan Runner Show. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. Okay. My name is Susanna Scaroni. Okay. And um, so um, you've had a couple races here in the last couple of months. Uh, how to, well, first of all, how did the Olympics go? Uh, so the Paralympics went awesome for me. I was fortunate to come back with four medals out of all, all four of my events. Great. And so I felt great there. Um, and, you know, finishing on a marathon with cobblestone course uh, was very challenging. Um, and so I, I've never done that before, and so I'm grateful to have had that experience as well. And I'm excited that New York does not have cobblestones. <laughs> What place did you get the marathon? Uh, third, third place. Okay, a point. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, being on even walking on cobblestone is a nightmare. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, all yes. that is hard, yes. you know. Yes. So, and then uh, you did Berlin. How'd that go? Yeah, Berlin was great. I felt amazing that day. Um, came in second place, had a strong race with a gold medalist from Paris. Right. And um, feel good. Yeah. And then Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, I also felt great. Thank goodness, you don't always get this long of a stretch, but um, I felt great in Chicago. However, I did get a flat front tire, and in the front tire, we don't usually change those. Um, you just take the wheel off and out of the fork to get that one on. So I uh, had a slow race after that. It's like pushing with your brakes on, so. Well, yeah. at least you did it, and uh, that's the problem when you do stuff with equipment. Yes, Thanks. exactly. <laughs> yeah. like, that's a deal with like triathlon. You always kind of worry yeah. about the bike. Oh, triathlon, <laughs> yeah. So, we're just so, praying that everybody on Sunday has the ability to show what their body can do. For sure. So, uh, what are you looking for? You know, so I hear the weather is going to cool off. Yeah. It's going to be hot today, but I hear by Sunday it's going to be nice. Yeah. And have you done in New York before? I have. I have this is probably my 10th or 11th New oh, York City awesome. Marathon. Okay. And so, um, looking forward to it. Good. And, um, like I said, um, and um, other than that, you know, you, like I said, you've had some good race, good training in between, everything else. Yeah, very good training. I'm really fortunate to train with a lot of other strong wheelchair racers at the University of Illinois. Okay, you're with them. Okay, yep. great. And so we've had, we're ready for Sunday. Awesome. Well, and uh, well, good luck with that. And uh, like I said, no flat tires. Yes, yes, pray for that. <laughs> okay, have a great race. Thank you. Great seeing you again. Thank you. Cool. Your name? Daniel Romantrop. Okay, well, one of our great wheelers, and uh, he's coming off of uh, Chicago second place. How'd, uh, how'd that race go for you overall? I think Chicago went uh, went pretty well. Um, you know, it was a, a kind of a, a tight tactical race. Uh, there was a you know small group uh, a lot of the time, and uh, so yeah, we went pretty well. And uh, so now you're here back in New York. You said your seventh time. You've won a couple times. Um, what a what sets New York apart, in your opinion? You know, everybody's got their eye on it many times myself. Um, and what do you think sets it apart and makes it difficult uh, from the, you know, from your standpoint? It's certainly a, uh, a hilly course and uh, relatively technical as well. Uh, you know, lots of lots of turns and uh, so uh, you those two things really kind of uh, you know set it apart from from some other courses. Um, and uh, you know, we've got a, a great field here, and so yeah, look, looking forward to Sunday. What's it, uh, you know, I always, uh, I go across the 59th Street Bridge and I always see all the hay bales there. Uh, do you, <laughs> do you have any trouble making that tight turn around that corner? I have not had any uh, any issues yet. Uh, you know, it's a, something that you know I, I know is uh, is coming up, so I try and try and watch my speed going into that corner. And then once you hit, uh, you know, First Avenue is always interesting. You think it's going to be flat, but Tripoli, it's a lot of hills. It's yep. You know, and then uh, you know from there, and then the other big hill is uh, just before you go into Central Park from 125th to 90th, the Mile Hill that never quits, right? You got it. It's got to be hurt going up that with the wheel, even then, right? It's certainly, uh, certainly, you know, something to uh, to keep in mind. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, well, um, how 
has your training been uh, here the you know last uh, you know few months, and especially since the Chicago, you just kind of rested, or you know what else, what all have you been doing? So uh, the last uh, week or so, I've been out uh, actually where I grew up in uh, in Mount Airy, Maryland, and okay. so I've been able to uh, to get out onto some hills. Uh, so uh, I usually try and like to get out uh, out on some hills before races like uh, you know New York and uh, you know Boston, things that have uh, some some pretty significant inclines. Now you so you're you live in Mount Airy then? Uh, so I I grew up in Mount Airy. Okay. Uh, I live out in Champaign, Illinois. Oh, okay, that's what I was talking about. Uh, you know, yep. The other uh, wheeler here, and so you, how many of you are uh, trained there uh, together now? Oh, um, I'm, I couldn't give you an exact but it's number. A lot, it's, huh? it's it's a number, yes. Absolutely. I know you. I mean, they're really big on that. Yeah, big, and, big training group out there. Right. Now, you know, with adapted sport, do they do anything besides wheeling? Uh, what are, are they into other they're, Paralympic sports? Uh, so there's also the the university also has a, an adaptive or a uh, wheelchair basketball program. Okay. And so uh, that that's there as well. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'm over by Ann Arbor, and uh, Michigan is starting a big adaptive sports program. And uh, you know, with the major universities uh, starting some programs, yep. there's going to be a lot more athletes coming in, and especially since the NCAA has now started a para para group. And uh, you know, the uh, para just uh, USA para just so joined with USA Track and Field this week. Yeah. So what what do you think about that? I'm really excited to see what the future holds. Well, for sure. Well, hey, we're going to be teammates out there and <laughs> Team USA para. <laughs> Uh, you know, so good luck with everything, and it's always great seeing you. Hope you're across that finish line first on, on Sunday. Thank you. Cool. Mechanisms and siloing all of my emotions uh, into, I don't know, maybe siloing isn't right. It's more like repressing like emotions. Um, and so, honestly, this is really a race for me. I'm, I'm really focused on this just like any other race. Um, what... There's no, for me personally, there's no amount of like, oh, the enormity of my career has to be expressed in this experience. I really don't feel any of that pressure at all. Um, I'm gonna race New York, I'm gonna try to beat as many women as possible, and then three steps past the finish line, maybe I'll start to kind of feel like, oh, I wonder what retirement will feel like. What, what's a good day for you, Thank you? I'd really like to break 2.30. Honestly, that's my, that's my goal. Um, I know the course is harder, I know it's not, you know, a place where you go for time, and so I've already been warned, you know, don't don't worry about the time, just go and compete and so forth. Um, but it would be so fun for me to finish on a PR. That's one way that I am kind of thinking about, like, oh, if, in, in the context of like, oh, this is my last competitive race. Wouldn't it be so fun, even though I've only run one, I've only finished one other marathon. I don't know, it's still fun to think I'm gonna finish running my best marathon ever. Totally. So, obviously a glittering career on the track. Thank you. Um, one of the best ever by an American distance rally. Like, what are your favorite memories from your career? Oh man. You know, so many of my favorite memories are in college. Um, you know, you wear a Colorado uniform, you're part of a team, and that's where so much of my development happened. You know, I took the biggest steps. You know, winning the pre fontaine Classic will just always be, or I'm sorry, I didn't win, but like running sub four, I was second, I was second. Um, but I mean, for a college kid, that's winning, right? I mean, it was, that. that is a, a moment that just transformed my idea of what I could do and who I could be in the sport. Um, making my first Olympic team, um, running uh, running a lot of those different distances from the 800 to the steeplechase to the 5K. A lot of those I ran for the first time as a Colorado athlete. Um, so those those are definitely my, my best and favorite. Um, and you also just grow as a person. You learn how to be a good teammate. You, you make mistakes and you have people around you to kind of help you. You learn how to recover for the first time. You learn how to handle defeat for the first time. When you're in high school, there's a stage there, but for me, there wasn't a camera. And so college was the first time you had to kind of like, this is what it looks like to lose graciously. So um, yeah, college will probably be my, my best memories. Yeah. What do you think was your best race? Was it that free race or do you have another one in mind? Um, I think one of my best races of all time was the Indoor Mile at Texas A&M when I won the conference championship. It was the only time I ever beat Sally. I, I led wire to wire, and it was just like, for me personally, like a young athlete maturing into kind of a, a commanding winner. And, and 
and that took time. That took a lot of development, a lot of like mental maturation. And that was the woman who went into her pro career that then could win medals. Um, and again, it took more development and more time, but that indoor race was a really, really good run for me. Yeah. Was there something that happened in your career? Like you go all over the world doing these races. I'm sure you meet all sorts of people. Like, yeah. Was there someone you met or something that happened that you were like, wow, I never thought this would happen, but now it's happening? Oh man, I've had so many moments like that. Um, I don't know that like on the spot I can think yeah, of yeah. one in particular, but I mean it's mostly that you you you're a young person and in 2007 I land in Osaka and I'm gonna race in the World Championships and you just think like who how did I get here and and then in the exact same vein like almost 20 years later I'm still doing this like I look back on the younger version of myself and I think. I, I could have never imagined it would last this long. Um, so what a privilege. I mean, in a way, I've had a professional running career times three, you know? I mean, how many people get 15 years as a pro? I'm finishing 15 years as a pro um, and then ha made teams before that. So um, yeah, I've gotten to live multiple professional athlete lifetimes in, in that time. I have to think that a lot of the top women now sort of grew up looking up to you or seeing you race. I'm wondering like, what was it like towards the tail end of your track career racing against them? Or did you ever hear from one of them saying like, hey, I was inspired and now I'm doing this or anything like that? I'm, I love that question because I haven't told this story much before, but I remember standing on the starting line of, of one of the races in Eugene. I don't know if we were running the, uh, the, the um, around or if it was a final or whatever, but we're on the starting line in Eugene to run one of whatever the dozens of races that 1500s I've run in Eugene. And there was a young woman in college running Cali US Championships. And she came up to me as we're on the starting line and said, oh, it's it's such a dream to, I, you know, I don't remember exactly her words, but like, you know, privileged to race against you. You know, I watched you growing up. And that was like both sides of the coin. It, it, it took me off, it took me aback. I was surprised that like, we're about to race each other. Like you just should want to beat me, you know? Um, but it was, it made me feel so, amazing that like my career had, had has been even a tiny little part of leaving this woman to this moment to being in this position to race at, at such a high level um, but also it kind of made me realize like the next the next group is coming the next generation is coming and and I'm closer to the end than I am to the beginning so um, yeah bittersweet mostly sweet but bittersweet who was that do you remember I don't remember I'll have to go back and look through some of the rounds and stuff and see if I can figure out who that was and then if, if, if you know who you are, reach out to me Speak and be fun to connect about that. That was a precious moment for me and I'm grateful for it. And then last question for me. Um, do you like what are you gonna miss most about professional running? Um I'm not gonna miss much because the 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 biggest part of it I'm still gonna do. Like I love running. So we're still gonna be I'm still gonna be out there running and competing. Um I really starting line and knowing like I'm ready to do something really special today you can't have that if you're not at the highest level doing the hardest thing and I've always known like that will have a lifespan and that part of my life will end before before I'm probably I'm probably quote unquote ready um, the nerves are difficult the the kind of shaking in your boots on the starting line is is always uncomfortable but there's something about it that it's like you don't know who you are yet like what you're capable of is on the track right in front of you or on the road right in front of you and that moment of not knowing but knowing that it's it's imminent and it's coming that reveal i'll miss that a lot very cool well best of luck sunday and, yeah uh, thanks thank for you time. thank you appreciate it now at the end you're talking about still competing are you thinking about doing some other races after this you know that are like for fun races yeah yeah of course i mean trail running exactly and that's the thing it's like an ultra <laughs> when you're competing at such a high level 
your experience of the running world is kind of surprisingly narrow. So as soon as my competitive life is, you know, my elite competitive life is over, I think the door swings wide open for so many other amazing running experiences. And running is full of so many incredible kind of groups and subcultures, and it'll be fun, fun to dabble in all of that. Maybe we'll see you out there with KR Goucher running some trails. Exactly. I mean, you can't be or a do Colorado Conrad's runner. Ultra. Yeah, you can't be a Colorado runner and not dabble in that eventually. Exactly. Well, I've done all that, so that's why. You know, oh, that's I'd, great. Being a race walker, then I've done all these other events, and uh, yeah. it makes it fun. I love it. And especially when you're not you're having to, to expect it to win, yeah. you can just do it for fun. Exactly. Exactly. I pace a lot of races. And do it with a friend. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I think you know I got to finish at the top. No, yeah. I'm just out here and have fun. I love it. Yeah. Love well, it. congratulations. You've had a great. And I've always enjoyed the interview, especially at the World Championships. You are the oh. best person. You're always the best person and uh, Thank you. happiest person, the biggest smile oh, to interview at that. the World Championships. I love it. Oh, you're making my cheeks hurt. Oh, Thank I you. That. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how did you do a uh, you weigh a wine glass? How did you do a wine glass? The half marathon. I nearly, I nearly PR PR'd. Um, I ran. Uh, just under 71 minutes. Good. Um, so that was good. 110.50, I think, or something like that. Um, I did win. Yeah. Good. It was nice. It's always nice to win. I was win. waiting for you on the podium. I, I beat my husband, which is oh, always a win. Yeah, and our, yeah. <laughs> you can be the reigning champion in the household. That's always important. Um, uh, but just a really, really beautiful day. It's awesome. Experience. That's an and, awesome place. Okay, let me tell you. Upstate New York that time of year. Oh, oh it was just beautiful. It was beautiful. It was a really good experience. Beautifully run event. Um, I, that's a race I, I would want to do again. I've done that race five, six times. I know the race director. Yeah. I drive over from Detroit. I faced it. That well, you is can an tell awesome them race. I said it was. I'll, it was, tell, I'll tell Sheila that she'll it was like wonderful. it. Wonderful. She'll she'd love to have you back next year. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank well, you. good luck on Sunday. Have fun. Thank you so good much. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, I've got a six year old, so I got to go back to Baltimore. In fact, my girls were going to come out um, with us. We flew in last night, but they're actually coming out on Friday just because my little girl is in kindergarten and she doesn't want to miss Halloween. So they're coming out on Friday and they'll be there for us. What are they dressed up as? Olympic runners? Or? Uh, good question. Um, Lucy's debating how are princesses, which princess she's going to be, and then Jenna's going to be a frog. Yeah. All right, uh, you had a, you know, a great year, and you. some people think you won the trials, or you could have won the trials. Do you, by the way, do you give Connor a hard time for that? Like, oh, no. Um, we, we definitely have like a lot of mutual respect when it comes to the trials and what we accomplished there. And uh, I'm very careful to say I didn't win the trials, but um, you know I, I hear it enough that you know I did feel great on that day and, and uh, he didn't feel too hot. But, but was there any regret? Because there's a big prize money difference. Um, you know I gave myself about 15 minutes to kind of really sit with you know maybe the consequences of what happened that day. And, and uh, after that, I, you know, no regrets whatsoever. You know, yes, there was prize money on the table and, and fame and glory, and but like honestly, what what I did that day, I don't regret in the slightest. Like it was uh, a true manifestation of my character in the highest, like in, in one of the most intense situations, right? And and uh, I I think. When I look back at that moment, like I really think about how I go back to the interview that I said, like I knew that I would be better in Paris training with Connor every step of the way there and in Paris, and, and we saw that happen, right? Like I, I definitely was uh, pulled and inspired and, and motivated by Connor in a whole of my training up to Paris, and, and I was pulling with him for him every step of the way in Paris, trying to close that gap and, and to go eight nine and. Have two guys top 10 in the world, like, I was really happy about that. And so, yeah, I go back to the trials and I think about, like, that was, that was everything that I wanted. Goal number one was to make the Olympic team, goal number two was to do everything I could. I was trying to make the Olympic team, and that's what I did. And, uh, no regrets. Uh, how's it, you know, and I, Coach Eisen said the training's been going pretty well. How would you compare your fitness to the Olympics or trials? Like, yeah, yeah, it's, um, you know, I've hit a lot of base hits. Like, I've hit all my workouts pretty dead on normal, but nothing, no grand slams, no home runs. Um, and that can be a little bit discouraging sometimes in training. Like, you can feel like you're plateauing, you're not quite as fit, but I also can say that I'm, like, the healthiest that I've been going into a marathon over the last two years. Like, I, I, uh, like I feel 
feel like, you know, I usually have a niggle or some high national pain or an Achilles pain going into the marathon, and I think I finally have like gotten through that, which is ironic because it's my third marathon of the year. Um, so I feel like I'm in a good spot. Like, uh, we'll, we'll see come race day. Um, and, you know, I did have to balance a little bit that quick turnaround between Paris and, and uh, New York, but, um, you know, after a couple weeks off and getting back in training, things started to click again. And, uh, maybe that's a, a sign to push ice stones training and training with Connor and, and maybe some super shoes and soft shoes and obviously all those in my corner, but um, I feel good. So, you know, the, big, the big hits are nice, but yes, the Yankees have a lot of errors. <laughs> You've had no errors, right? I've had no errors, yeah. but... I, I, Blessing to train with Connor Mans, but it is also difficult when he's hitting the grand times in practice. And, uh, you know, I have to kind of walk away from every workout and evaluate, okay, how can I close that gap? How can I get faster? And, and you know, is, is Connor's performance in a workout an indication that, you know, he's getting that much better, or am I not as good as I want to be? And so there is a balance there that I'm having to play uh, every day in, in practice, but that's just what I've chosen. And, I wouldn't have it any other way. All right, well, good luck to you. Thank you. Good luck. Have a great race. Thank you.